We now return to Engineering Disasters on Modern Marvels. Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas, is a school of honorable tradition. Once an all-male military school, the now co-ed campus still reflects a history based on discipline, motivation, and pride. One of the most popular and long-standing traditions has been the elaborate building and torching of a giant bonfire the night before Texas A&M plays football against arch-rival University of Texas. A tradition which turned tragic in 1999 with a collapse during bonfire construction, resulting in the deaths of 12 students. The disaster brought an end to the annual Aggie bonfire, the first of which burned in 1909 as a pile of rubble. You can look at the pictures from year to year uh, of the bonfire and see where it grew not only in size and shape, but it was also made of different materials. Uh, starting with the trash, then they switched to lumber, which was originally cut off the university and then cut off of private land. And actually one of the evolutions that occurred in the whole bonfire activity was that the building of the stack became a minor part of the entire Aggie bonfire experience. The actual cutting of the wood was a more involved activity. By the time Jim McTasney became head red pot, or bonfire organizer in 1992, students hand cut logs at nearby forests needing to be cleared, trucked them to the campus bonfire site, then spent weeks lashing the logs together with steel wire, slowly filling out a stack built around a center pole supported by guide ropes. As many as 3,000 students worked on building the stack. The purpose of Aggie Bonfire to the students that built it was not to build a stack. Provide answers to why this tragedy occurred. It was to go out there and experience leadership. And in order for Aggie Bonfire to be the valuable leadership experience that it was, and the valuable training ground that it was, you had to keep the physical labor in it. You purposefully shunned the mechanization and the automation in order to allow as many students as possible to participate. According to tradition, if the bonfire burned past midnight, the Aggies would win the game against the University of Texas. So emphasis in building the stack was placed not so much on height as its aesthetic appeal and ability to burn into the wee hours of the morning. Larry Gross, a professor at Texas A&M from 1981 through 1996, used his construction management background to help students design a structure that could look good and burn long. I did go out and observe the bonfire and uh, the lighting of it, and also the collapse of it after it was ignited. And we noticed how the rotation, it did rotate as it came down. To eliminate that rotation action, we suggested to interlock by having the logs from the top layer extend into the lower layer, uh, space them throughout, and this would help to lock the two stacks together. And uh, this would eliminate that rotation action. Larry and Red Pot student organizers analyzed other structural issues as well. We suggested that they move out from the center pole about 20 or 25 feet and drill a series of holes all the way around the bonfire and set the poles into the ground. And this would help to stabilize that bottom layer of them. And then we would fill it and take a cable and cinch it up. And by doing that, it really made a, a good structural and strong bonfire then. Larry Gross viewed building the bonfire as a valuable educational process. So much so that bonfire design became an independent study class. Here were a number of young students who had uh, an issue of, obviously a budget issue. They had to follow. They had a schedule. It had to be ready to burn the night before uh, the football game. They had to be safe. So it had all the makings of a major construction project. And the class project was to develop a procedures manual 
for constructing a bonfire. Photos of bonfires during this time period suggest the obvious attention to structural detail. But then came November 18th, 1999. Students worked throughout the night to build the bonfire, scheduled to burn a week later. At 2 a.m., as cranes lifted logs to those working on the top and the sides of the stack, the unimaginable happened. The entire structure collapsed. The result was tragic. Despite the efforts of rescue workers to remove the heavy logs as quickly as possible, 12 students were found dead. 27 were injured. Following 90 years of successful Aggie bonfire building, what went wrong? Texas A&M established a commission to determine the answer. According to the commission report, the collapse occurred for several reasons. As comparisons with earlier bonfire stacks reveal, a decision had been made in 1999 to try to make the tiers more straight up, vertical, as opposed to earlier teepee-like shapes, in which the logs leaned slightly inward. The logs used in 1999 appeared to be more irregularly shaped than those used in previous years, providing a looser stack harder to contain. Aggressive wedging of logs on the second tier to fill gaps below. Increased pressure on steel wire encircling the stacks, causing it to snap under pressure. Using the analogy of a wooden barrel, the hoop strength was not sufficient. Some of the issues that we had developed with our students and with other faculty, not just myself, uh, but other faculty in our department were involved with this. Uh, apparently, they, some of these activities were not being followed. The commission's report concluded that the tragedy resulted from a lack of engineering supervision. Surprising to many in view of how the structure increased in size and complexity over the years. The Aggie Bonfire had always been a project run by students for the students. Larry Gross's involvement had been considered a casual, informal student-teacher collaboration. The collapse was about physical failures driven by organizational failures whose origins span decades of administrations, faculty, and students. No single factor can explain the collapse just as no single change will ensure that a tragedy like this never happens again. 1999 was the last year the bonfire was built. Today, a memorial honoring the students killed in the collapse is being built where the bonfire once burned. It is unlikely there will ever be another Aggie bonfire. For student red pots like Jim McTasney, that's a major loss. Any success that I have today, I can trace back to my experience with Aggie Bonfire. It was the most rewarding and educational leadership experience that I had at this university and have had since. Aggie Bonfires in the 1990s contained between 5,000 to 7,000 logs that were 8 to 24 inches in diameter. Engineering disasters will return on Modern Marvels.